he made a big move in turn four to get the fourth spot on lap two, and then a caution came out when Satterfield spun on, and I think it was turn two, if I if I remember right. But the, I think the highlights in this race for me was Dusty having the big lead, looking like you know this that give it to the 73, you know, this guy's checked out. It's a done deal. And then Fettinger breaking out. The caution helped. The caution did help uh, late in the um, – Stacked him back up. You did stack him up, give everybody a shot at the 73. And I think really on, on that field that night, that particular night, it was the 73 and the 88. It was those guys. I mean, they they separated from the, themselves in the field, and, and they went at it. Um, fantastic race. Fan, but behind them. Behind those guys, you know, like I said, Bailey, um, actually Bailey in the 68 was battling uh, Jimmy Lipke, the four car, the four white car out of California. This kid, that's a rookie driver. He's a rookie. He's been impressive this year. He didn't look rookie to me. No, he didn't. He he held his own against, you know, and Jesse Bailey's no slouch. He's got to win this year. He's one of the five winners we've had. Um, He's been... Let me grab that. Um, <laughs> that, that was just uh, – so we had Fettinger for the win. Dusty Jr. Dusty for second. Yep, Dusty Jr. for second. Justin Foe finished third in the sixth car. Yeah. Beautiful race car. Yeah. Bright. I can see it on the track all the time. I always know where he's at. Um Bailey was fourth. Andy Freeman had a good run in the 30 car. He finished fifth, and it was Orsburn, Orsburn, uh, Ray Niffen Jr., Satterfield, Lipke, and Richie. Um, you know, doing that, doing that race, I was I was kind of like torn between. I tried to keep the leaders in about three and three to five back. I, I watched. Tally it. I know what you were trying to do. <laughs> trying, it was hard trying to keep them in the same frame. Yeah, yeah, hard to do. Because there was as much going on up front. As it was in the middle or even the yeah, back. Yeah, in the middle. Yeah. And even in the back, you know. All the way through that field was a great – it was just a great race. I mean, it was competitive. And I knew it. And, I, you know, we was live, thank goodness. And it worked. It worked. It did work, yeah. You know, and it worked. And, you know, I was trying to give everybody a good view. And it was like, well, do I stay up here? Or I go back there. And then, oh, no, I better stay up here. And then I just tried to frame it and try to keep them in there, you know, so you could see them. And, God, that was a good race. Yeah. I was just sitting up there going, yeah, buddy, go. You know, <laughs> you know I, I have to say, I, I, other than if you want to talk about the best race of the year, I would have, right now in this division, I would have to say it was probably during Speed Week with Weinbarger and Kellen Chadwick. Great race. Um, this right here was every bit as good. Yeah, Truly was. I mean, just – and that's not just because the leaders had a great race, but all the way through the field. You know, the entertainment, you know, the, the for the fans was – like Ed said, it was how, where do you put the camera? You know, yeah. I mean, how do you how do you keep what in the frame? And yeah, how do, I don't <clears> want to miss anything, you know. But uh, they're going to be back on August the tenth. Yes, yeah. August tenth, the so, IMC uh, mods are back. And put that on your calendar. That's right, no doubt about it. Uh, sport mods, we already talked about them once on the show. Everybody knows I, I, I'm a fan of this division. Um, we had a new winner in the sport mods two weeks ago, and that was Braxton Possinger in the 25P car. I want to talk about how he won that race because he he he's a young man, okay? He's a young driver. But if you watch how he won that race, he won that in true veteran style. I mean, you got guys behind him duking it out. They're slugging it out two, three wide. I mean, they're going for it. And Possinger knew I've got the line. These guys want to take it from me. They're going to have to move me. And I'll tell you right now, he wasn't the fastest car on the track. If you look at the the, But he wasn't given an inch for anything. Well, here's the thing. He wasn't the fastest car on the track. But he drove smart. That's exactly where I was going. He was the smartest car on the track. He did not. That car, I, I, I never saw that car out of shape one time during that feature. Smooth as butter. Absolutely, and if you want, if you even listen to his his throttle as yep. they came to him, it was he was not working that throttle like the rest of the guys. He knew I've got to put that power on the ground. The track, we all know how slick the track was two weeks ago. It was slick. I mean, that's 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 not that's be real about it. It was slick, and and he 
used that right foot and that big bowl of jello between his ears to, to get the job done. And, man, I'll tell you, that kid impressed me Saturday night. Last, uh, last two weeks ago. You didn't hear much wop wop and going in the turns. No. Not at all. No. Not from him. He was very consistent. You heard a lot from everybody else, yeah. though. Yeah. Very, very consistent, though. Going. Every time he came around, I was listening to that engine. Yep. And it was very, very it consistent. Just making horse it was power. almost like uh, it was on repeat. It was a nice it, little it, gift. Yeah. It was just playing over I think and he over had and it over again. Control. It was, That's yeah. what he did. It almost looked that <laughs> way. Yeah. It well, almost I couldn't find out way. one of my coworkers grew up with him. Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. No kidding. Funny. So this race was, um, it took a while. And that, and as a driver, you know, like I said, Braxton's not very old. Um, that's something you don't want to happen. You don't want that. You, you, nobody likes that. I don't care if you're a veteran or not, but especially a young guy looking for his first win of the year. Eight cautions, guys. Yeah, there was a bunch. There was eight restarts. I mean, this is this is what you hate, you know. Even I don't care what level you're racing at. Every time that caution comes out, and you're the leader, period. But when it happens seven, eight times, yeah, this sucks. You know, this sucks for the, for the drivers. Fans were getting a little antsy. It took a while to get this one rolling. Once we got it rolling, we got a pretty good race. Mm -hmm. But it just took it took a while. It took a while for them to get in the groove. Well, that's the thing. They couldn't get a groove because the cautions kept coming out. Yep, and what, right. what 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 do cautions do? And what does the driver? What does the driver hate the worst? Once you get out there and you think you got your rhythm, and there's and a caution. Poof, there it goes. Cautions just, create cautions. Yep. Nobody can get away from each other. Everybody's getting antsy. You're trying to restart. You got to bump around somebody. The track slicks. Somebody goes around. Caution comes out. We saw a lot of that. Once these guys settled down, got into their rhythm, and started going, it was a good race. Um, in the IMCA Sport Mods, Jansen Nips won the Trophy Dash. That seven car is fast. I mean, he, he, he is this kid fun to watch. <laughs> he he lets it all hang out. Am I am I? I mean, he Literally. lets it he lets it go. He is not afraid to take chances. I, I actually he's a very entertaining driver to watch. Um, we had four heat races. Uh, Isaac Sanders won one of them. Braxton Poster won one. Donald Banfield in that beautiful number thirteen, and the point leader in this division at Southern Oregon Speedway, Jordan Broughton. Um. Were your your heat race winners? Possinger started this race in the second row, along with Isaac Sanders. Okay, or he started. Um, let's see here, I'm trying to remember. I'm I'm looking back. Uh, yeah, I, I, he was in the second row. Uh, There's some guys in this field that have won already. You don't want to bet against. The Sanders boys, you don't bet against those dudes. The twelve and I and the and the and the two two M, um, Mike Medell, yep, Jordan Broughton. Uh -huh. I mean, there's so many guys in this division that. I'll tell you what. I think it's anybody's race anytime they go out there. Yep. This particular division, yes. <laughs> yes. Brandon Wilson, the twelve W. <laughs> Brandon Wilson, another yeah. guy that you just you don't count out. I mean, this guy's gonna get a win. At Southern Oregon Speedway. I'm telling you right now, listen to me. That car is going to have a win for the season's over. Another young guy that's just putting it together. It's coming around. Um, so when you're a driver in this, again, and you're going out trying to get a rhythm against all this talent, that's frustrating. Now, when you're the leader up front, it might be a little easier. But it's still just as nerve-wracking because you know those guys. You got some guys knocking on that door. Yep. And this is what saved him. And I'm not saying his talent didn't save him. His talent clearly came out. The way he drove that car was clearly the smartest anybody drove in that racetrack that night. And that's a huge compliment to this. There's a lot of good drivers that we just mentioned. He had the clean track to work with. He had the line to pick from. There were guys three wide behind him racing for a position. When I say that helped him, it absolutely did. Because when you're racing and you got a guy inside of you and a guy outside of you, you know you're not worried about that car in front of you right now. You're no. worried about these guys here. You want and to get it, through clean is what you Right, want. and if you're the guy on top looking down on two cars below you, you're thinking, man, I hope they don't touch. I mean, you know what's, if they do, it's coming up. There was enough of a gap between them anyways <laughs> that, you know, they were pretty safe. I mean, yeah. They were there, but well, they, were, they, they were looking to get that number two spot. They were trying, but they weren't going to get by that 25P given the fact that he was as smooth as he was. He feathered that throttle just perfect, and he had the line. He could pick whatever line he wanted. I mean, they never – seriously challenged him for the lead that I remember. Um, 
does anybody remember him being challenged? I mean, seriously, like underneath or, or on, I mean, there was maybe a couple of times where on restarts. Um, they might have got down kind of close to being under him a couple of times. But yeah, was, yeah, but never got. But then all. It was once kinda, they got rolling, he yeah. he opened it up. Mm-hmm. He yeah. opened it up, yeah. Um, but you know there's a lot of good-looking cars. <laughs> oh, this that, division that especially. That division, they yeah. really look good. And, you know, I kind of felt bad for Mike Bedell. You know, Getting that lighter. number 30 car. Cause <laughs> he, you always see him and Mary out there polishing and wiping and cleaning. It got beat up. It did. Well, <laughs> he was in that pack of cars we're talking <laughs> about right. that yep. was yeah. racing for second, yeah. third, fourth, and fifth. That's right. And he was running second for a while. Then he got shuffled back to third, came back up to second, got up to the high side, three cars went over and back to fifth. And, I mean, that's how this whole group was. It was just, you know, it was a revolving door. And, and where were you going to be when the checkered flag flew? was the question because it wasn't going to be up front ahead of the 25P car. No. It did, I mean, they just didn't have it for him. But the race that those guys put on was, was man. It was an excellent race. Once they got going, it just took it. I mean, <laughs> I think this race took a half hour. Mm-hmm. I think it was 32 it was minutes. 30, it was 32 minutes and 54 seconds. Yeah. I, think is I went through two batteries. Yeah. yeah, that one race. That one race. That tells you how long it was. Yes. I mean, it, it was – but once they got going, man, um, fantastic. I mean – Postinger got the win. Isaac Sanders was second. Jordan Broughton third. Matt Sanders fourth. Brandon Wilson. There's all those names I just mentioned. We're all top five guys, okay? Mm-hmm. Jacoby Shields was sixth. Mike Medell ended up seventh after running second. and I mean, right there in the hunt. I mean, he got to the highest. Yep. Matt Ruff was, was eighth. Michael Rule and Wyatt Westfall. Around. I mean, there's a competitive field of cars. Anybody's race. There's no slouches out there. There's not, oh. and they're going to be back August 10th as well with with the uh, with the modifieds. Um, I'm going to save that one for last. I'm going to save this this these notes here for last. We're going to go up and talk about the late models. Do we want to do that? We want to talk about late models. Do we want to go with? Uh, let's go with dwarf cars. Let's go with the dwarf cars. They're getting to be my favorite. <laughs> These guys are you awesome. Know what? I love the dwarf cars. Sandy does. She I does. do. It's one of my. It's fastly becoming my favorite. For you know, sure. I've watched them. I've watched them. The first time I actually seen a dwarf car was back in ninety four, ninety five, up in northern Oregon, Banks or somewhere up there. I can't remember. Wherever it was, I seen them. I just St. fell in Helens love with them. Yeah, St. Helens. Yeah. I just fell in love with them. The first time I seen them, I thought, man, these are so cool. Look at these little puppies. You know, you it's, know? they've got to be on the right track, though. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, know. Southern Oregon is a great track for those. For the dwarf they're, cars. The, for the dwarf the cars. The size just, of the track. It's not yes, too small. They're the perfect. Banking, yes. They can really put those cars in those corners. Listen, oh, my God. listen yeah. to those engines. Yes. Those engines are wound. They are tapped. All the way around. Yeah. yeah. They don't They don't lift. They don't have to. But when you're four wide, I mean. Yeah, you got to get out of it. Every uh, well, <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. I mean, somebody's <laughs> got to. Not everybody can be a hero. Yeah. Well, um, I wasn't too sure about this one, guys. We saw so much action. I mean, you want to talk about action. This was the race of the night as far as action for the fans. I can't tell you. Um, 25 cars. Yeah. That took the green. Okay. Um, I think we had like six different leaders in this one. I mean, it, and the lead wasn't where you really wanted to be, it seemed like. Because he kept getting pushed back. Or broke. Yeah. I mean, we saw. Um, or in the grass. Or upside down. Well, we saw one of those. <laughs> get up and then, thank goodness it wasn't too bad. But yep. um, I think we saw Josh King, Robustelli. I don't know if Lumen, the nine car got to the front but i know brock peters led for a little while um there were so many different leaders in this race it was just this was exciting um can i ask a question here yes every time the dwarf card gets on the track all i hear is robicelli 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 because his name stands out i know but does he drive a sprint car also no i don't think so really I don't think so. There's a Robicelli that drives a sprint car, too. Really? Yeah. I have not I seen found, that driver. I found that out this weekend. Okay. 
I was. Oh. I was well, you know torn. what? Then it probably is. I mean, how many people do you know with the last name Robustelli? That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. I have never personally seen uh, Camden in a sprint car. So. Yeah. 